1994 was an interesting year in technological terms because it was the year that Netscape Navigator was released. Yeah, really kind of immersed myself in this new space of the internet. One of the first things I came across was this idea of 3D scanning, which has really influenced me. And I called those objects at that time image objects. I think probably the first work that broke through in 05 was a piece called Thousand Year Dawn. You've got a young man, a sort of game character, which we built. We placed him on a beach, and on that beach, he watches the sun rise. But there's been a sort of a glitch in the system, so the sun takes a thousand years. The biggest success of that time was called Smoke Trees. I made portraits of five trees, and then instead of cladding these portraits of trees in leaves, we clad them in smoke. Instead of absorbing carbon dioxide or smoke or waste, there's this kind of glitch and the trees have become these waste producing objects. Dust storm is again this idea of an intangible material becoming a sculptural form. This is dust as an object, as a, I call it a social sculpture. Following the first world war, Somewhere around 100 million acres of the American Midwest was plowed. The biggest destruction of any ecology pretty much to date, which is the destruction of the American prairie system. The earth dried and then it blew. It's never recovered. One of the big sources in 07 of dust storms were actually storms photographed and videoed by American soldiers in Iraq There is this sense that these are objects. They don't look like they're moving, but they're progressing very, very slowly. The eventual piece is called Dust Storm Down of Texas 07. You can see the storm never progresses. It sits upon the landscape, sort of is a a memory or a ghost of this history of ecological destruction and its after effects. So this is called a live fire exercise. It's in Djibouti in Africa, in which American soldiers are exposed to blast as part of their training. And that image was central inspiration for a piece called live fire exercise. We went to Djibouti, photographed the scene, rebuilt it as a virtual world. The piece was installed on the empty stage of the Royal Ballet in around about 2011. It's a group of ballet dancers assembled in front of the work, and the first chord of the score triggered the explosion that makes up the work. So Exercise Djibouti was based on an image from a war game. You have camouflage smoke, And I was very interested in the idea of a sort of a rainbow or prism as used within war games. And I decided to respond to this scene. So what we had to do is we had to build virtual smoke sitting upon a cracked mud desert, which is an algorithm. We worked with a group of athletes who were training for the Olympics. We made very beautiful 3D scans of them. And they ran a figure of eight until they could no longer run. We motion captured all of that action and the piece became Exercise Djibouti in 012. And in that work, this group of athletes run in a figure of eight. Their performance is timed by the release of camouflage smoke. Probably the best known of the sculptural smoke works, which is called Western Flag Spindletop from 017. This is the site of Spindletop, Texas now. It's augmented by a flag of smoke, which recalls the gas that was drilled there between 1901 and 1950. It remains with us, that gasoline, as invisible carbon dioxide in the air, which is called the CO2 legacy of the 20th century. And this flag remembers that CO2 legacy, but also suggests that out of control carbon dioxide has the potential to dissolve the nation state through mass migrations, food crisis, heat crisis, storm crisis, you name it. World flag is 195 smoke flags in which we print the color of the national flag in smoke. Each one sits in what I describe as a future desert. 
if we stay siloed in nation states, competing with each other and consuming 100 million barrels of oil a day, we're going to end up with this desert, devoid of life, a hot desert. My ambition for World Flag as an artwork is just for people to look at this and, you know, to be a little bit shifted. I'm just super interested in moving post-geography, post-place, post-national, and it encouraging people to fight for legislative change, to break down borders, so that we try and think and work as one human world.